Five, four, three. Welcome back to the quad rugby match. We're here at the 2009 National Veterans Wheelchair Games. Just beginning the third quarter here, and Scott Severin gets right back off to what he's been doing all game with a score, bringing the score to 30 to 21. And the first half has certainly been the Scott Severin show. Here alongside me, Bob Crandall, Secretary for United States Quad Rugby Association. And uh, Scott Severin scored all but one of White's goals. What does the yellow team need to do to slow him down? They need to contain Scott. They don't have anybody on that floor that can get in front of him, deny him the ball. Uh, and if they can get on top of him and keep him boxed in and keep him down low, then they've got a chance. Because okay, they knock the ball loose. Yeah. Alonzo that's, Burnett's that's, pass goes a little far. With the players that Scott has out there, he really doesn't have any players that he's found that he can pass the ball off to. So if they can keep him down, I, I think they can come back and really challenge for this game. Now, in, the, in this sport, I haven't seen too many double teams. Is that something that the LT might want to consider with Scott? It's exactly what they need to do. They, there's no way that any one player out there is going to be able to hold Scott, keep him contained. So he'll either push through the person or push around him. For the yellow team out there, they have uh, Harold Bostic, number 10, Sean Mashad, along with number one, Jeremiah Butler. And rounding out the crew is number 11. So for the yellow, their formula has, for success has been Bostic and McGuire, who have scored all of 21 of their goals. McGuire with 10, Harold Bostic with 11. And then interesting enough, Steve McGuire starts second half on the bench. And Steve's been uh, a player coach for them, and I, it, it's going to really hurt them with, with him out of there. They've been capitalizing on that the fact that they actually have a couple of players out there that they can, can, uh, can go back and forth with the ball. We have an illegal use of hands call in the quad rugby. Oh, what did you get called for? Spin? Oh, okay. All right. Uh, he's called for spin, which is hitting behind the axle. The, uh, the spin call is, is implemented in the game because it, it's a dangerous hit. It can be a dangerous hit, uh, causing the chair to spin and, and either snapping the player's head. And so we do uh, consider safety in this game. It, it isn't totally kill a guy with the ball. So Burnett will take a seat. That's not going to slow Severn down one bit. As they score the, the shorthanded goal, Burnett eager to get back out there, but he only can uh, come out as if the yellow team scores. And that was a shorthanded goal. He scored that with three players. And the yellow, if they can, need to communicate. The low pointers need to communicate with each other, get together, and do that double team that you talked about earlier. Butler able to save and not get the goal, but at least he saved from going out. And Yellow will get the ball down on their side in scoring position. And it seems that uh, Bostic has been looking to Butler for his new running mate with McGuire on the bench. Now Alonso is going to be in the penalty box here for a minute or until the Yellow team scores a goal. <laughs> So this is Yellow's prime opportunity to, to pick up a goal on this. Score 32 to 21, the white team in control. Just opening up a double digit lead for the first time of the match. And that pass is intercepted by Severn. Now they've got him down there. If they can keep him trapped in, not reach. So this is a time uh, where White probably gonna call a timeout. And, and he does. Timeout. This will be White's third timeout as yellow will use this time to bring in some subs mcguire returning as well as robert schuler made up of the yellow team 
is made up of three Army veterans, two Navy and two Marines, while the white team has five members who were in the Army, two Navy and one from the Coast Guard. Just a few minutes into the third quarter of play here. Now that leaves uh, White with one 30 second timeout left and two one minute coaches timeout. And Yellow I believe has the two 30 second timeouts and two coaches timeouts. As we're getting set to play, White will inbound it. And they're still on a four on three, so I really need to capitalize on this, take advantage of it. it into Severn, gets it out, going Settle deep, this. trying to get it to number four, Philip Rosenberg. It said McGuire will get it. As Alonzo Miller leaves the penalty area, got a whistle on the play. As we wait and see, figure out what's going on between the officials. We got a change of officials out there. Uh, it's Kelly is the uh, the lead official, and she organizes this every year, and uh, actually organizes the quad rugby event for the uh, for the, the veterans games. And the other official is Tim Davis. Uh, he's a Combat veteran from Vietnam, disabled Marine. So we so got a penalty on the play with uh, Timothy Kelly coming to the bench. I didn't catch that foul. Did you catch what? I was I, looking for what the penalty was. I didn't either. So as soon as they get one player out of the penalty box, another one returns, giving more opportunities for Yellow and Bostic. Because Sorensen uh, setting some screens there as Bostic no, loses the ball. Unforced error there. Yeah. So Yellow having a little difficulty getting on track this half. Uh, Sorensen trying to set some screens there. He's doing a pretty good job until Bostic lost control of the ball and it rolled out of bounds. So White will inbound it with the Alonzo Burnett gets it into Severn. Now they've got him in a good McGuire position and Bostic. There, keep him there. They got all four around him, so can he get rid of He can. He finds Burnett streaking for the goal. Bostic trying to stop him. Oh, nice and he gets it. McGuire gets good the hit. ball. And he's off for the races down the sideline. Now he still he needs to get gets, this ball across in 12 seconds. I gets think he's his got dribble it. in, gets it across. He will look to take it the entire way. Bringing the deficit within 10. 32 to 22. They called that a penalty goal. But uh, Steve McGuire did was, rather than score the ball, he pulled away. He saw a defensive player heading down to cover him. The defensive player went on over the end goal, the end line, which is an illegal move. Normally he would have been in the penalty box, however, because Steve McGuire was going to score anyway. And with with the uh, last goal by the yellow team, Tim Kelly will be able to rejoin. It was a little late getting on, but it didn't matter as Severn still was able to score. Bostic inbounds it into Robert Schuler. Now on that inbound, it, it was to Schuler. Schuler on the on the given goal, and Schuler's a low pointer, and that that's a, a role that uh, in, in quad rugby uh, you, you'll frequently see a point five set up for the inbounds on the given goal. It's uh, it's really a good role for a low pointer, and it's nice to be able to get your hands on the ball. And while uh, Steve McGuire and um, Harold Bostick and Scott Severn might be getting all the limelight. Some of those lower classified players really make it able with stuff like that, the giving goes, the screens, and, and that sort pitch. of stuff. We really, you, the low pointer really needs to get out there and be able to pick off the other high pointers and and help their either impede or help impede the other high pointer or help their own high pointer get down the court. 
So it's picking. Oh, Boston can't get a hold of it. As the ball sails out of bounds. All of Yellow's goals have come from either McGuire or Bostic. Now, when we were looking at that, uh, what, did, did we find out that last, uh, the first half, uh, Scott Severn scored all of the goals for white or gray except for one, was it? Yep. So, if they can just figure out a way, Yellow can figure out a way to keep Scott contained, they might be able to get themselves back into this. They're still only down by single digit. Checking in for the white team is number three, Lauren Strong, number 11, Paul Mann. Number 10, Kenneth Matthews. Man with the 2.5 classifications. Matthews with the one and a half and strong. A recent so addition to the team. Inbounding the ball, it was uh, a little bit short on the pass. It might be a turnover and a goal. And uh, I think we've got Steve McGuire forgetting what direction he was going. He started to head back this way. But it doesn't matter. As Bostic gets in there. So why Bo Bostic, McGuire, and Severin? Most of the attention, as we were talking about earlier, the players with lower classifications are really still intricate part to the game. Kind of similar to what, maybe linemen in football without getting the glory, but the quarterback's not going to have a good game in football if the linemen aren't blocking. And that, and that is exactly right. With, with, without, your, without your low pointers, you're not, you're not going to score. Nice pass there from number 11, Paul Mann, getting it to Severn. It's going for the long ball to Bostic. Can Severn catch him? Gets one dribble down. Do a quick spin. He will look to take it. Dishes off to McGuire. Can he get it back to Bostic? Can he squeeze it in the cone? There's a goal. Yes, he can. Now down by 10, 35 to 25. White started off this game very quickly, or Scott Severn, I should say, as they took a quick 5 to nothing lead. Yellow was able to stay close for most of it until a recent, uh, recently White was able to pull ahead, not by double digits. And once again, Severn will stroll across that line. We're three Lauren Strong there setting some screens. Gus Sorensen will inbound it. Bostic has control of it. He's got McGuire going down the sideline. He's also got Sorensen on his right. Bostic will take it all the way. Kenneth Matthews tried to get in the way when it was unable to in time. And Matthews will be the one that inbounds it. Uh, Severn's in the open floor. That's never good. And once again, Lauren Strong sets a nice screen there on McGuire. Line for Severn to coast in for the goal. One of the aspects of the game that you don't see showing up in this game as, as much as we might later and, and you might normally with players that have been playing together is the setting up in between the whistles. Uh, to where you use the uh, the time after a goal to get yourself in a position to either be able to receive the inbound or block for your player or else keep an offensive player down. Nice that'll be a time the court on that. Yeah, that'll be a time for Team JB set up them some set offensive pieces. Well, I was really thinking more of uh, what the yellow team might be trying to do uh, to try and. Uh, try and contain Scott. So that if they're looking, if Scott's broken away, if they're looking to try and get in a position to cover him, so that when he scores the goal and he comes back in, that they're in a position to, to kind of keep him out of the play or keep him from where he wants to be after the goal. It'll be a tough inbound here. He doesn't have any triceps. Number three. Lauren Strong, 0.5. You very seldom see a 0.5 inbound the ball. I was impressed. That's it. No more time off for Blue. 
White will take a timeout. That is their that is their last of their 30 second timeout, so they only remain with the two one minute timeouts that must be. It's just really great the, the show of support that, that we've, we've seen since we've been here. The theme of the week's games is rolling on the river, and as Bob mentioned, Spokane River winds right through downtown Spokane, and there's a beautiful riverfront park right there, right in the downtown area. It's been a perfect setting for this week's of events. We have just over two minutes left here in the third quarter. Severin is able to break free from the trap attempted by Bostic and number four, Jamel Williams. Yeah, the volunteers from the Spokane area have really come out and able to put on an event like this. An event on such grand scale it is not able to happen without the, all the volunteers. And, you know, I was over doing some billiards earlier, and all the officials were volunteering. I heard uh, yesterday, I think, think there were like 3,000 volunteers. Yeah, the... I've heard that, which is very amazing. And Spokane started preparing for these games nearly two years ago, and the hard work and preparation has paid off. And Bostic will take that in. 39 to 29 is now the score as we're entering the last minutes of the third quarter here. Timothy Kelly will inbound it into Severn. I don't think he's going to catch him. Jeremiah Butler unable to get Severn. Well, Jeremiah is a three, but. He's playing in a defensive chair. He's got that, that picker out front there that would normally be on a low pointer. And, and a three, he's got good hands. You'd be consider him. They got him boxed in there, looking good. He doesn't have anybody he's going to go to. He might have to use a timeout. And Butler was reaching over there. He thought he saw enough ball for him to get his hands on. But uh, Kelly called him for uh, for reaching. You, they won't let you uh, won't let you touch the other player. Jeremiah Butler called for the foul, illegal illegal use of hands. And he will be in the box he will for come either the box. one minute or the goal. Jeremiah Butler, the Army veteran, is competing in nine ball earlier. He's also competing in slalom, weightlifting, and softball. The Augusta, Georgia native. Steve McGuire trying to get a time called out. Oh, he wanted subs, and looks like he got it. Jamal McGuire will return, taking out Jamal Williams. 
Well, I'm not sure what this guy's name is. He's touched the ball a couple times today. Severn looks for the easiest Playing path down. then. Playing down one, they decided to drop into the box. So you see the three defensive players for the first time have dropped into what we call a key defense. Normally the fourth player would be playing up top there where you see number 12, Timothy Kelly for the white. Uh, what we call the chaser, that would be your fourth defensive player who cannot go into the key until maybe one of the other players comes up. I'm just kind of waiting for Severin to make his move. No one from yellow wants to leave that goal area. And unable to stop him as he muscles his way in there. And on the Maybe goal, Wayne Bostic. then Butler can come back in. And the Butler return, yellow would be back to full strength. That give and go work. That will be the, will be the end, end of the third quarter. The score is 41. 29 white. Yellow going to be looking for a miraculous comeback here in the fourth quarter. This event is being brought to you by HealthNet Federal Services Incorporated. And right after this, we'll be back with more fourth quarter action. Thanks for watching on xable.com.